Hi everyone. Uh, I hope I'm audible and visible to all of you. I would be needing a quick confirmation, please. And if all is well, then we can get going. So very good morning and welcome to these two sessions that we are going to conduct today and tomorrow. Today is going to be a mixed bag that is uh, pathology and microbiology. And tomorrow that is on 21st, we have the culture media and both of these sessions are going to be an active recall. And many students have been asking me how to go ahead with active recall and what is it like. So active recall means you've read everything. You've done your rapid revision, you've done your notes, your, uh, you know, QBank and now you need to test yourself. You need to be able to see that how much of it are you able to recall. Yes, so that is exactly what we are aiming for and that is the active recall session which I have on Instagram also called it fill in the blanks which makes life a little easier and I have always believed that I have myself studied in this manner and I believe that if you ask yourself questions, if you make yourself fill in the blanks, life becomes a lot easier for you. You are able to, uh, you know, recall things a lot better. Okay, so I suppose everything's well and AV is working fine. Uh, so we can get going uh, without any delay. I've got approximately 15 questions and we are good to go, right? Okay, let's start with question one. It's an easy one, but just put up in a different manner than how you've seen it earlier. Let's start with question number one, guys, without any delay. Let's get going. We have a three-month-old male infant presenting to the pediatric outpatient department with severe muscle spasms and seizures along with recurrent infections and feeding difficulties. On examination, the face looks dysmorphic and there is a cleft palate. On chest x-ray, there is an absent thymic shadow. So now by now I'm sure you guys have made your diagnosis. This much of information was enough, but they've not asked you the diagnosis. They have asked you which of the following is the cause of the seizures in this patient. So I'm waiting for an answer to that. What do you think is the cause? Try to correlate it with the disease, you know, because any electrolyte abnormality can be associated with seizures, but you need to put it in this case over here. So what is your diagnosis? Firstly, you will have to tell me that. And that happens to be the Dijorge syndrome. Now, why did we call it Dijorge syndrome? Because we all know the famous Dijorge syndrome that is going to be catch 22, isn't it? So we are going to revise catch 22, but we know that in catch 22, the answer happens to be hypocalcemia. There is a decrease in the calcium levels and that is responsible for the seizures over here. Yes. So now who all is uh, going to recall for me the catch 22 mnemonic very, very easily. Dijorge to sabko pata lag gaya. Once Dijorge comes, catch 22 comes quickly. This is the fill in the blanks. This is how I've got your fill in the blanks today. I've hidden some of the information. You are going to put out that information for me. As you keep telling me, I will unhide this information. Okay. So catch 22 mein 22 kya hai? What is the deletion that occurs? The deletion is deletion 22Q. In fact, for INICET students, please remember, it is deletion 22Q11. That is how you need to know. It is 22Q11 deletion that is there. Now, agar ulta hota, again, this is for INICET, if it would have been deletion 11Q22, you know what is the difference? The difference happens to be in the chromosome. When I say catch 22, Dijorge syndrome in that the chromosome number 22 is affected, 22Q11. But now I am saying opposite. If I say deletion 11Q22 means chromosome number 11 is getting affected and that happens to be a case of ataxia telangiectasia. So these are two different, totally different conditions. But how just twisting around the words is going to make a difference and you won't get confused. Why? Because it's as easy as knowing that, okay, Dijorge may catch 22 hai. So 22 is going to have the chromosome number 22. Okay, coming to the next, we have other parts. So when chromosome 22 is deleted, tell me two things. What is the embryological problem? I think we all know there are two organs that are going to get affected. These organs are going to be the thymus. Number one, there is going to be thymus. And the other one is going to be the parathyroid gland. These are not developed. The thymus and the parathyroid are not developed. So T for kya hai? T for thymus is not developed. Guys, when thymus is not developed, B cell or T cell? Which cell is not going to get developed? What is your fill in the blank over here? So thymus, T for T, T cells are not going to get developed. So can I say the patient is going to have infections? Go back to your question. 
T cells are not getting developed. Is your patient going to have infections? Yes, your patient had recurrent infections. Let's move forward. So, no thymus. So, thymic shadow was also absent over here as you saw. So, this perfectly fit. Hua. Next, we come to parathyroid not being there. Parathyroid not being there means which um, you know, uh, thing is going to get affected? Simple decrease in parathyroid hormone will mean decrease in calcium. And that is what led to seizures and that was the answer over here. What are the other parts? Patient has cleft lip, cleft palate. Did your patient have cleft lip, cleft palate, feeding difficulties, abnormal facies? Yes, sab tha, right? See, abnormal facies, dysmorphic abnormal facies, cleft lip, cleft palate. Yes, sab tha, right? The last thing in catch 22 is cardiac abnormalities. Guys, cardiac, lots of them. Many students write to me, ma'am, which cardiac abnormality? Lots of cardiac abnormalities are known. However, you should be knowing that over here it is tetralogy of palate which they ask you a lot of questions about. TOF is something which they really tend to uh, you know analyze you on. So I think that is settled. Fill in the blanks. Sabne kar diya. You've given me good answers. I'm also adding few points which could you know because this is for all students. FMG, NEET, INICT. But because INICT is the closest that we have, so I thought I'll keep putting in points which are important for you guys. Now tell me, I've just spoken about deletion 22Q11. 22. Pehle to how will you test it? If you had to test for this deletion, what is the methodology that you know? How do you get to know chromosome has been deleted or chromosome has been added? What is that thing that you have? There is a technique called FISH. So if someone asks you what is the investigation that you will do, koi bhi deletion ke liye, I will be going in for FISH analysis. Question number one. Question number two for INICT that I want you to know. Do you know when I say chromosome 22 got deleted, actually what gene got deleted? This is a typical INICET question. Typical INICT. Which gene got deleted? TBX1 got deleted. Okay, so can I say TBX1 is going to cause die george syndrome? But that's not the point. The point is what else can TBX1 problem have? Any psychiatry condition that is noted over here? Yes, TBX1 has been associated with schizophrenia. Now, this is again something which I wanted to put up for INICET only. Very, very important. These two no questions are different. Fish analysis is what is the investigation and TBX gene is what is affected. That causes Digeorge also. That causes your schizophrenia also. Settled with this question, can we move on to question 2 which is already made a hat trick in all the exams so i believe you will be able to do it very very easily as well and that is question number two over here you have a very young 25 year old woman who's come for her gynae examination gynae examination means you will get her pap smear done and the pap smear has been shown over here now you need to tell me that a further after pap smear you could see something to biopsy hua biopsy reveals that at that young age she has an invasive squamous cell carcinoma Obviously, you went in for studies and you found that molecular tests for HPV are positive. How does HPV have a role in pathogenesis of neoplasia? This is a question which is a PYQ, but I have just made it a little lengthier. Abhi tak it just came as a one-liner that, okay, how does HPV cause neoplasia? But now I added a picture, I made it a little longer and most of you have got it right by the inactivation of tumor suppressor genes. So, should we, you got the question right, answer right. Now you quickly need to do all the fill in the blanks. So let's start. This is how you start with the fill in the blanks guys. Tell me. This is the picture that I gave you. All of you identified it to be a coelocyte. Why is it a coelocyte? Why is this cell a coelocyte? And how is it associated with human papilloma virus? Coelocyte ka identification ke liye, there are two points that we all have to know. Remember? Point number one is that, can you see the nucleus? The nucleus is just like a raisin. It is a raisinoid nucleus, point number one. You can see raisin is nothing but it's a dry fruit, it's, a, it's kishmish. So, it's got a very tiny raisinoid nucleus and around the nucleus, if you look around the nucleus, you will notice white white area. Hai. Around the nucleus, there is a white white area means there is a perinuclear halo. 
there is a perinuclear halo that we see over here. Repeating raisonoid nucleus with perinuclear halo. Now what you guys need to tell me is for again, that whenever I will see a coelocyte with raisonoid nucleus and perinuclear halo, I will think of HPV. Now tell me for I and I C E T students, where else do you see the same findings? Same raisonoid nucleus, same perinuclear halo, number one is seen in coelocyte. Now you need to tell me any renal cell carcinoma where I write the same appearance. Raisonoid nucleus with perinuclear halo and that is going to be which RCC? It is chromophobe RCC. It is going to be the chromophobe RCC. Is that okay with everyone? Yes. Any confusion up till now? Meanwhile, I saw a lot of fill in the blanks occurring otherwise also. Very good. So now you guys need to tell me the next part. This is the fill in the blanks. This is how a question of microbiology will come to you. So microbio question tells you that here you have HPV 16 ka diagram. Why have they given you? Even HPV 6 will have the same diagram. 11 will have the same diagram. What is the significance of HPV 16 and HPV 16 and 18? And that is what it is. These are high risk human papilloma viruses. High risk viruses means that they are going to have a more chance of causing squamous cell carcinoma. That is something which is going to be more significant over there, right? Okay, so on that note, ye sab iske baare mein L1, L2, E4, E5. Now you need to do one by one fill in the blanks. L1 pe kya question aata hai? What is the purpose of L1 in human papilloma virus? So I think we all know L1. Very good. L1 is the capsid. Capsid se kya banta hai? Capsid se banta hai vaccine. L1 is the capsid from which the vaccine is formed. Okay. Coming to E4 and E5. What is the role of E4 and E5 in human papilloma virus? Everything that I am telling you right now is a previous year question. E4 and E5 ka kya role hai? The coelocyte that I just told you, that raisonoid nucleus, perinuclear halo, wo sub is associated with is associated with this E4, E5. Now comes the question, E6 and E7, they are the ones, these two of human papilloma virus, they cause cancer. E6 causes cancer, E7 causes cancer. How? How do they cause cancer? Because they switch off. They, you know, we've got some, we all know, na, we have good, good people in our body. Who are the good people of the body? Good people of the body are P53, jisko kya bolte hai? Policeman. And there's one more good person in the body called retinoblastoma gene who is known as the governor. Policeman and governor are two good people. They protect us. But E6 and E7 say that I will go and switch off the policeman and the governor. The combination is very important, guys. You need to know E6 will switch off which good person? Policeman. E7 will switch off which good person? Retinoblastoma gene. And if you've gone through my rapid revision and other notes from any platform, you would be knowing that is, there is a mnemonic for this that we always study. We always say out of policeman and governor, policeman is the junior official, governor is senior official. So junior official ke liye smaller number and for the senior official you've kept the bigger number. So what are these? What are these good people? Actually, which family do they come under? These good people are tumor suppressor genes these good people are tumor suppressor genes. I am removing the tumor suppressor genes. That is what I am doing. So what is this? Inactivation of the tumor suppressor genes and proteins. That is what is going to result in neoplasia. So please remember this guys. Very very important. They have always asked you the pathogenesis. Baki I have heard a lot of people doing multiples, 3 ka multiple, 6 and all. Okay. Whatever way you have learnt it in that is totally your choice but primarily you need to know okay there are two things e6 and e7 and they have inactivated my p53 and rb gene that is what you need to know importantly ho gaya yahan ka fill in the blanks are done coelocyte is done coelocyte and raisonoid nucleus differentials are also done these are all bullet by bullet questions that are coming up okay shall we move forward to the next one question number three coming up your way so here you go you've got a Let's start reading. You've got a three-year-old baby. So, a lot of pediatric baby kind of questions coming up. Okay. Um, Dr. Uh, Tamin is asking, is this for FMG? Of course, FMG, INICT and NEAT. But if I give any extra information only for INICET, 
दैट आई एम मैंशनिंग वो इग्नोर कर देना बट दिस इज फॉर एवरी वन ओके सो थ्री ईयर ओल्ड बेबी इज ब्रॉट टू द पीडियाट्रिक आउट पेशेंट क्लिनिक विद कंप्लेन ऑफ अ पेनफुल स्वेलिंग ऑफ द लेग एंड हिस्ट्री ऑफ फीवर ऑफ फोर डेज case of cellulitis has been detected and for sample confirmation a catalase test and i guess the image is not visible because it's gone somewhere out of the screen but i can tell you the catalase test is positive so the image is probably gone out of the frame of this uh, the video but yeah the catalase test has come out to be positive which condition would be associated with this case basically they are wanting to ask you that which are the following conditions is going to have catalase positive kind of uh, uh, reactions very good मैम इमेज हो या ना हो वी आर सेटल्ड विद द आंसर द आंसर ओवर हियर रिमेन्स क्रॉनिक ग्रैन्यूलोमेटिस डिजीज द रीजन बाय आई गॉट दिस क्वेश्चन टूडे ओवर हियर इज बिकॉज येस्टडे और डे बिफोर येस्टडे सम वन गॉट अ स्मॉल क्लिपिंग फ्रॉम वन ऑफ द रैपिड रिविजन नोट्स एंड टैग मी ऑन इंस्टाग्राम इन दिस एंड दिस रिमाइंडेड मी ऑफ दैट फनी निमोनिक सो यू नो आई थॉट दैट बाई नॉट पुट इट इन अ क्वेश्चन एंड रिवाइज दैट निमोनिक विद यू इज देर एनी निमोनिक दैट कम्स टू योर माइंड वेन आई टीच यू क्रॉनिक ग्रैन्यूलोमेटिस डिजीज सी जी डी बट बिफोर दैट वी ऑल्सो हैव टू लुक एट ऑल दी अदर ऑप्शन ठीक है विल बी कमिंग टू दैट बट पहले टेल मी chronic granulomatous disease now when i say cgd the defect the defect is nadph nadph oxidase there is a deficiency of nadph oxidase inict students knowing only nadph oxidase is not going to suffice they will also ask you the genetics so what will you do nadph take the ph oxidase take the ox so please remember it is a fox gene mutation it is a fox gene mutation for chronic granulomatous disease that you need to know so fox matlab nadph oxidase further what will they ask you inheritance who will tell me is it autosomal recessive x linked recessive which inheritance do you know for this it is a case of x linked recessive also it can be a case of autosomal recessive also dono possible hai. so how will i know examiner has given me x linked recessive or autosomal recessive x linked recessive is going to be gp91 fox mutation and autosomal recessive is going to be gp47 67 many many other or koi bhi number hoga 41 61 47 67 any other kind of fox that is mentioned everything goes under autosomal recessive only this one only the 91 fox comes under xlr and ye mnemonic to you remember na guys because i have always told you 9 plus 1 sounds like a 10 hai na so 9 plus 1 that 10 looks like x so remember the 91 fox is xlr and other numbers go into ar so this is the defect clinical features is what was asked catalase positive infections exactly how it was given in your question mother will come to you with a long history a long reports every time you will say staphylococcus infection hai candida infection hai or some e coli infection something which is always catalase positive every time the microbiologist gives you a report ki acha catalase positive infection hai you know you are dealing with a case of your cgd what else the next question that has come in the paper is the testing how do you test for this particular disease so pathology may actually it's a biochem thing there are two tests ek to chhota wala small one screening test and one is the major one that is the diagnostic test here i think everyone knows the mnemonic na screening test is nbt what is the full form of nbt nbt is nitro blue tetra zolium obviously this is how the examiner will write it that nitro blue tetra zolium test was done as soon as the examiner writes nbt i know he is talking about cgd but nbt is what test small test it's a screening test and how did we learn it what was the mnemonic nbts and this is something which you know sometimes i also get my mnemonics from the way students learn I have been teaching NBT since so many years. For me, it's very simple: nitro blue tetra zolium. But for students who are hearing it for the first time, they feel NBT. कैसे याद होगा? So one student had learnt it as nibba nibbi test. NBT NBT करते करते he went on to nibba nibbi test. So that became my mnemonic in a way. The NBT nibba nibbi is all those small teenage couples, right? You keep seeing on Instagram and other social media platforms. So small test. The small kids वाला small couple वाला test that is nibba nibbi test. NBT is screening whereas what is diagnostic 
D for D. D is going to be DHR. Diagnostic test is dihydrorhodamine testing. Dihydrorhodamine. Even if you don't remember the full form, chalega. All that you need to know that all these three, three, three letter things are gonna come together. N, B, T, D, H, R, C, G, D. All these three letter things, we are gonna keep it together. So I hope that is okay with everyone and there is no confusion uh, regarding this. Yes, settled with this. Can we move forward? Coming back to my question. Here you have your um, condition that is chronic granulomatous disease. Why? Because catalase positive. Tha. But why not the others? We have to rule out. Na. Why not die, George? This too is clear. Na. I just now discussed catch 22. So you shouldn't have a problem for die, George. It is easy. What about this? What is this disease? Why is it not Bruton's hypogamma globulinemia? Because as far as I remember, jaldi se, fill in the blank session hai, so I don't have to teach you much. You have to teach me. What is Bruton's hypogamma globulinemia? It is a BBBB disease. B for Bruton's, B for, it is a disease which is more commonly seen in boys. It is a disease where which cells are defective? B cells are defective. And it is a disease where the genetic mutation is the BTK defect. So, please remember B for boys, B for B cell, B for BTK. Boys, B cell, BTK. This is the first trio that you have to see in a question. So, ye to, you should be knowing this. But now, how will clinical presentation of this disease come? Hypogamma globulin. Gamma globulin. Gamma globulin means immunoglobulin. Hypo, hypo means less, immunoglobulins are less. Wo to ho gai. Because if B cells are not working, then immunoglobulins will not form common sense. So no immunoglobulins will form, especially which immunoglobulin? Especially IgG levels are going to go down. So now you're going to tell me that if IgG goes down, what is that process of inflammation that is going to get affected? There is going to be defective opsonization and if opsonization is defective, this means that the patient is going to have infections. Now, if this entire trio is mentioned, boys, B cell, BTK, BBB, that is when I will be selecting Brutons. Over here, it was not Brutons, right? Okay, coming to the last one. Why is it not Shediac Higashi syndrome now that you've done this? I know it's a huge chapter, but this is the best possible five minutes of finishing of this entire chapter. Why is this not a case of Shediac Higashi? Because Shediac Higashi, mein, there is one very classical hair and skin problem that has to be mentioned. Wo nahi hoga to, it's a major concern. So finish that off also, guys. Can you fill in the blanks of the table of Shediac Higashi syndrome? Please tell me the genetic mutation that you have <clears throat> and that is the list gene defect. That is going to be the list gene defect. So list, matlab, list means something to do with lysosomes. Theke? Lysosome, if you know sometimes what happens is uh, examiner, you've read it in one way but examiner doesn't want to write it in that way. Everyone is uh, you know uh, searching in the exam, ki ma'am list gene was not written, I was searching for the list gene. Examiner did not write that, examiner wrote lysosome defect, it's one and the same thing. So just keep your common sense open, that is the most important thing in the exam. You have to keep your common sense intact. So lysosome ka problem hai and how do you learn it? You learn it by the same mnemonic as the name of the disease, Shediac. Quickly fill in the blanks over here as well. So I hope this fill in the blank session is helping you which means that uh, life becomes a little easier for me but a lot tougher for you because you need to put your mind under a lot of exercise. So C for what? There is CNS or neurological abnormalities. Matlab, mother will say that milestones delayed, hai, my child is not getting good marks in school. Some of the other problem with neuro is going to be there. Okay, next, HE. HE is what? Mother will say that okay, hemorrhage ka problem hai, the child has bleeding, nose bleed or random bleeds from multiple orifices. So, some of the other bleeding, bleeding problem will be there. DI, decreased immunity. Decreased immunity. Immunity. Decreased immunity means again the mother will say that my child keeps on having infections again and again and again. Now comes the main thing. What is A? A for why is it also a derma condition? Albinism. This everyone has to know. Albinism matla pigment ka problem. What pigment problem? It is a problem in the hair and the 
skin and that is what you call as grey silvery grey hair in fact these kids have silvery grey hair very very important point for you to know i'll also tell one point for ini cet in just a minute pehle mnemonic khatam karo what is the k over here k thoda sa ck same sounding coarse granules this is the picture that you will get this peripheral smear photo will be given in the exam look at this let's zoom in these are white blood cells can you see in these white blood cells there are some big pehle let me tell you see this is the white blood cell neutrophil hai, big cell and can we all notice these dots these blue color dots big big granules over here also these are the coarse granules so here you have shedia ke gashi ke liye to best hai क्वेश्चन में फाइंड शेडियाक न्यूरोलॉजिकल प्रॉब्लम ब्लीडिंग प्रॉब्लम इन्फेक्शन प्रॉब्लम हेयर का अपियरेंस तो वेरी वेरी कैरेक्टरिस्टिक एंड कोर्स ग्रैन्यूल सो दिस इज वाई यहाँ पर देर वॉज नथिंग लाइक दैट सो दिस इज वाई शेडिया की गैशी वॉज रूल्ड आउट हेयर यू हैड only one thing that was mentioned and that is catalase test catalase test means we are dealing with catalase test positivity matlab chronic granulomatous disease i am giving you one tiny little homework for tomorrow tomorrow's homework is sare catalase positive organisms you have to learn and come because tomorrow is microbio day for culture media in that i will ask you this homework of catalase you will do fill in the blanks of catalase positive tests theek hai chalo now this is also settled let's move on to the next question and other the big big table kind of question before that ek ini ct question pending hai i just told you that shedia khegashi syndrome shows you this albinism which albinism of the hair of the skin of the eyes matlab what is it showing you it's showing you oculocutaneous albinism oculocutaneous albinism is seen in shedia khegashi and do shediac higashi patients also show bleeding you will say yes ma'am shediac mein h e hemorrhage bleeding bhi hai okay so apart from that can you tell me any other condition which has the same two things bleeding and oculocutaneous albinism ye batao this is especially for ini cet students i am telling you to go into the platelet wala chapter there is bleeding and there is oculocutaneous albinism so this is something known as hermansky pudlak syndrome this is known as hermansky pudlak syndrome what is hermansky pudlak syndrome is your homework number 2 for the day so there are two tiny little homeworks i am giving you ek to catalase positive which most of you are have already answered and the second one is hermansky pudlak syndrome i have given you a hint usme bhi ye silvery gray hair hota hai albinism hota hai in that also there is bleeding you just need to go to the platelet chapter and put your mind into a little more exercise that what was hermansky pudlak syndrome homework number 2 is settled tomorrow morning before we start the session these two homeworks you will answer for me okay this question is done let's move on to another table wala question that you have here you go guys what is this again a lot of pediatric things coming up today so let's get going you have an 8 year old girl with numerous hypopigmented ulcerated patches on the face and the forearm and they have developed into indurated crater like skin nodules on the back of the left hand biopsy from the skin nodule discloses a skin carcinoma this is the real crux of the matter molecular studies reveal that this patient has germline mutations encoding for nucleotide excision repair you know sometimes you're reading 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 things don't strike you but then you come to this one word and there the question is done and that is exactly the confidence and the strength that you need to have in the exam abhi starting mein padho you will feel acha derma ka question hai something about dermatology keep that patience keep that confidence keep reading you will come to a point where there will be a sudden click and you will be able to solve the question but that click will happen if you are very very calm and composed and that is nucleotide excision repair matlab i am talking about a syndrome called xeroderma pigmentosum okay so before that baki sab kya kya tha let me figure it out why is this not neurofibromatosis because common sense neurofibromatosis mein neurofibroma the neural component is only missing so i cannot make a diagnosis nothing neural it's all skin 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 neurofibromatosis has a skin condition but what are those spots known as it is known as the cafe au lait spots that's totally different there's no carcinoma skin mein there is cafe au lait spots not mentioned ruled out why is this not leaf from any syndrome 
लीव फ्रॉम एनी सिंड्रोम क्या होता है फिल इन द ब्लैंक्स ओवर हियर लीव फ्रॉम एनी इज अ पी फिफ्टी थ्री म्यूटेशन लीव फ्रॉम एनी इज अ पी फिफ्टी थ्री म्यूटेशन वॉट हैपन वेन पी फिफ्टी थ्री गेट्स म्यूटेटेड फोर फिल इन द ब्लैंक्स क्विकली यू विल डू फॉर मी बी 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 If a person starts showing BBBB tumors, you know that this is a case of Lee from any syndrome. BBBB means brain tumors or cancers, brain cancers, breast cancers, bone cancers, blood cancers. If the family shows you BBBB, pura family tree will be given full. Uh, Ekta Kapoor kind of a you know Hindi television soap will be given where they'll have a grandmother and a grandfather and mother and uncle and aunt and children and full family drama will be given and everyone will be having BBBB tumors, brain, breast, bone, blood. If these cancers are given, you know it is. Leaf from any syndrome. So, वो तो नहीं था. So, leaf from any ruled out. Why is this not ataxia, telangiectasia? Common sense. Neither is the question having ataxia, nor is it having any blood vessel problem. So, totally ruled out. Even if I would have ruled out these options, now I could have come to zero derma pigmentosum. And how do I learn it? Please note when I'm talking about. Look at how you write this. Nucleotide excision repair. There is a problem in excision. nucleotide excision repair defect whenever there is a problem in nucleotide excision ulta padho you will get zero derma pigmentosum and zero derma pigmentosum means that the patient is going to have lots and lots of skin cancers like squamous cell carcinoma basal cell carcinoma so simple whenever they mention nucleotide excision repair it is going to be zero derma pigmentosum that is settled over here is that okay for everyone and i know many of you would want to revise all the others so let's that is what i have for you you i mean i am not going to teach you you are going to teach me you have to fill in the blanks for all the dna repair all the dna repair defects that you have so what are the dna repair defects number 1 you have न्यूक्लियोटाइड एक्सिजन रिपेयर ये तो अभी हमने पढ़ लिया इट इज गोन बी जेरोडर्मा पिगमेंटोसम सो दिस इज वॉट इज सेटल्ड न्यूक्लियोटाइड एक्सिजन रिपेयर जेरोडर्मा पिगमेंटोसम टेल मी द नेक्स्ट इफ दे इज अ प्रॉब्लम इन एम एम आर मिस मैच रिपेयर जीन डिफेक्ट तो क्या प्रॉब्लम होता है वेरी फेमस सर्जिकल कंडीशन दैट हैपन ओवर हियर इफ दे इज अ प्रॉब्लम इन मिस मैच रिपेयर जीन इट इज एच एन पी सी सी दैट इज हेरिडिट्री नॉन पॉलिपोसिस कोलन कैंसर दैट इज वॉट आई सेट ना कोलन कैंसर होता है अदर नेम वॉट इज द अदर नेम फॉर हेरिडिट्री नॉन पॉलिपोसिस कोलन कैंसर इट इज लिंच सिंड्रोम आई एम श्योर दिस इज समथिंग दैट यू गाइज हैव रेड इन सर्जरी एंड इन गाइनोकोलॉजी बोथ so if these two you have learned after this whatever is left comes under homologous recombination many students have written to me ma'am homologous recombination or non homologous recombination guys homologous recombination as per robins i know there is a different answer given in biochemistry books but robins mentions homologous recombination and that defect is going to result in three things फैंकनी अनिमिया ब्लूम सिंड्रोम एटेक्सिया टेलैंजेक्टेजिया इतना सब कैसे याद करेंगे आई गिव यू अ वेरी सिंपल वे ऑफ लर्निंग यू नो दैट अच्छा न्यूक्लियोटाइड एक्सीजन के लिए ऑपोजिट जेरोडर्मा पिगमेंटोसम फॉर मिस मैच रिपेयर आई हैव मेड यू लर्न एम एम आर जीन्स के लिए एच एन पी सी सी और लिंच एवरी थिंग एल्स कम्स अंडर होमोलोगस रिकॉम्बिनेशन इन फैक्ट नाउ लेट मी आस्क यू अ क्वेश्चन फॉर जेनेटिक्स which is the your options 1 2 3 4 5 which is the only autosomal dominant condition out of these yes autosomal dominant condition out of these is going to be hereditary non polyposis colon cancer which means all the others are autosomal recessive that is how you learn it if you visit your uh, genetics wala notes again na you have a mnemonic called big facts there is a mnemonic called big facts and big facts will tell you that these are all autosomal recessive and what is big facts everything is written dhyan se dekho big facts b for what bloom syndrome okay what is f fankeni anemia a ataxia telangiectasia x xeroderma pigmentosum c all the autosomal recessive conditions are in front of you repeat with me bloom syndrome fankeni anemia ataxia telangiectasia 
एंड जेरोडर्मा पिगमेंटोसम ये सब ऑटोजोमल रिसेसिव है मीन्स द ओनली वन विच इज ऑटोजोमल डोमिनेंट इज हेरिडिट्री नॉन पॉलिपोसिस कोलन कैंसर और लिंच सिंड्रोम कमिंग बैक यहाँ पर दे हैड आस्ट यू अ लॉट अबाउट स्किन कैंसर स्किन कैंसर मीन जेरोडर्मा पिगमेंटोसम nucleotide excision repair are we settled with this question we can take up another one right that's also a sure shot and a typical fill in the blanks kind of a session right okay let's move on to the next question over here here you go a 62 year old woman now finally we moved out of the pediatric age going into the geriatric age okay 62 year old woman presents with a breast lump that she discovered 6 days ago a breast biopsy shows lobular carcinoma in situ and you need to compare compared to the normal cells of the breast these cancer cells would most likely show a decreased expression of which of the following proteins ye this is one of the easiest questions that i have kept today which i am expecting everyone to answer easily and that is e cadherin to pehle ye decide karo ye wala this is what we'll uh, you know discuss and then other options also we have to come to so let's discuss e cadherin first you need to tell me the way you write e cadherin let me take out c d and h out of it e cadherin is c d h 1 gene very very simple i did c d and h c d h 1 gene i'm talking about normal abhi no cancer normal you and me Let's talk about what CDH does. So this is what is CDH, guys. This is a cell. This is a cell. This is a cell. I call E. cadherin as fevicol. It always is going to keep the cells together. This is what E. cadherin does. It does cell adhesion molecule. Hai. As simple as that. In simple words, you are calling it a fevicol or a glue. I mean, books call it cell adhesion molecule. I will call it. glue okay it is a glue it keeps cell together now they are saying decreased expression matlab e cadherin has gone down fevicol has gone now i am saying e cadherin has gone down cdh gene has gone down the glue has gone down now what will happen the cells will they stick to each other nahi there is no fevicol now all the cells are going to go away from each other if all the cells are going to go away from each other there are two cancers that are going to occur number 1 is going to be the diffuse gastric cancer was this a question of diffuse gastric cancer nahi no, this was not a question what is this second one second one is invasive lobular carcinoma breast invasive lobular carcinoma breast is what is noted so how did again this is a, a mnemonic na which you have done with me in my classes that if the glue if the glue is gone the golu tumors are going to occur golu means gastric and lobular simple if the glue is going to go away that is e cadherin the golu tumors are going to occur that is gastric cancer and lobular cancer over here what did we have we had lobular carcinoma so what are you going to select when gastric and lobular comes you are selecting the glue golu that is e cadherin so e cadherin is settled there is nothing new to teach you but fill in the blanks remains what are the other options given over here okay desmin desmin pe kya question aata hai Uh, there is a very classical question on desmin desmin is not a mutation desmin is a marker can you fill in this blank desmin is a marker of which cancer or which type of cell of your body because they really tend to ask you this question kaun sa wala cancer or cell of the body and that is going to be what has been asked very frequently is rhabdomyosarcoma why do they ask you rhabdomyosarcoma rhabdomyo is what skeletal muscle so desmin desmin is going to be a marker of the skeletal muscle that is rhabdomyosarcoma this question is done okay third one p selectin p selectin forget p only selectins if i ask you where in pathology do you study selectins selectins are studied in the process of rolling inflammation chapter may selectins have rolling one question for ini cet students what is the cd marker for selectins i am going to have a separate class on cd markers also in the coming uh, time before ini ct and neat cd marker for selectin is what it is going to be cd 
very good cd62 and how many types of selectins do we have not just p selectin we also we have epl we have always learned selectins as epl english premier league right that is what we learn it as epl so we have three selectins e selectin p selectin l selectin all the selectins are what selectins are going to be positive for cd62 and selectins have a role in what they have a role in rolling okay coming to the last one what is this telomerase written over here telomerase telomere to pata hai telomerase what is the other name for it telomerase is known as immortality gene telomerase is known as the immortality gene which means that if if by chance you and i we get a lot of telomerase if we get very lucky god gives us lot of telomerase we will become immortal we will live like those uh, you know the new channels you see that someone has turned 150 years old 120 years old so many things which we will also become like them we will become immortal we will live forever because telomerase is immortality gene so baki sare options settled this was a classical case of e cadherin or cdh mutation that is also done. Chalo, let's now go forward to the next question that you have, which is uh, this one. Here you have something which is a classical PYQ. You, this has come in every exam before, so you need to tell me on this. Yes, a quick answer and then I'll start discussing which of the following localizes in veins draining the ileocecal region. Okay, so I've got an answer. Uh, before that, sorry, I have a doubt pending from Dr. S.S. regarding Vimentin. Uh, Dr. S.S., Vimentin marker that you're telling me, Vimentin is just a marker of mesenchymal sarcoma. Any sarcoma, not just rhabdomyosarcoma, liposarcoma, osteosarcoma, leomyosarcoma, fibrosarcoma, any sarcoma can come positive for Vimentin. So, not necessarily rhabdomyosarcoma. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. Yes. So, meanwhile, I've started getting answers. Uh, options mein jo confusion hai, ileocecal region ke liye, I am getting options of uh, B, C and D. This is the only question where I've got a lot of mixed um, answers from all of you. I was not honestly expecting that. Okay. So, let me teach you and then get you back to this question. I think that works well. Uh, at least this much I can tell you that I was dealing with a schistosoma member okay this was no, because kind of common sense lagate many of you answered fasciola hepatica guys hepatica should have not had a, have any uh, intestinal uh, you know reference hepatica should have had some kind of a liver reference so this was the easiest to rule out you are talking about veins of ileocecal region so it's the other three options that you have to think of so we have schistosoma hematobium mansoni and japonicum here you have you have schistosoma hematobium mansoni and japonicum so when i talk about schistosoma hematobium remember hematobium kaise likha hematobium does it remind you of hematuria this is something that is going to cause hematuria uh, means hematuria means urinary bladder it will not go to the intestine wala veins it is going to go to the urinary bladder wala veins that is why it goes to the vesicle and the pelvic plexus it goes to the veins of the urinary bladder region common sense being hematobium will cause hematuria so hematobium to nahi tha now other options are schistosoma mansoni and schistosoma japonicum and it's easy one of them will go into the small intestine one of them will go into the large intestine so how am i going to learn it now you you've been with me since such a long while in this journey of preparation so you know that alphabets are the easiest to be arranged whatever answer you can get from the name that is going to be the best so if i talk about ileocecal region i comes closest to j so i know ileocecal the smaller intestine hai, that is going to be with japonicum and then the larger intestine that is the sigmoidorectal goes to mansoni so typical ratta previous year fact based question now tell me ileocecal region is it hematobium no hematobium hematuria tha, urinary bladder tha, not happening 
out of mansonian japonicum what does your answer become it is going to be schistosoma japonicum going into ileocecal answer that i got least most of you answered second third and fourth actually the answer is schistosoma japonicum and guys before we end this question please 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 answer all these points fill in the blanks kar do of schistosoma that are important and before you start with this i'll give you a hint schistosoma ka fill in the blanks happens as this if you know s for schistosoma you know s for everything so i'll 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 do the first fill in the blank which family am i talking about i am talking about trematodes so now you need to know the rest of the fill in the blanks can you tell me the mode of transmission is it by eating ingestion is it by breathing inhalation or is it by the skin so if i put my mnemonic in place schistosoma will have to come from the skin skin penetration fill in the blank number 1 successful all essays everyone's like ma'am this is like we can answer it in our sleep also this is so easy for us it is going to come via the skin this was a recent previous year question okay infective form what part of the schistosoma comes through the skin cercaria larva meta cercaria larva so if these are the options i'll look for the s wala sound s wala sound tells me it is going to be the cercaria larva that you have so cercaria larva is going to be present okay then you come to adult worms a very famous question that is asked adult worms male female separate separate or are they all in one hermaphrodite so kya hota hai are they separate sexes or are they hermaphrodites so if i have to follow the s rule then i will say that the sexes are separate the sexes are separate someone mentioned metacercaria larva no uh, dr shruti i just want to tell you you are right if you are answering about trematodes all the other trematodes then it is metacercaria larva you are perfectly right but here we are talking about schistosoma schistosoma is an exception to this family schistosoma doesn't have metacercaria larva as the infective form schistosoma always finds the s s sound okay so it is the cercaria larva similarly the sexes are going to be separate okay how are the eggs another s coming your way the eggs are going to be spinous they are going to have spines and projections so now put up all the s's together please when i talk about schistosoma s for schistosoma s for skin penetration s for cercaria larva s for sexes are separate and s for spinous eggs that is how you learn the entire table of schistosoma and the three eggs are also in front of you let's start which of them is going to have you can see this right in front of you which of them is going to have a terminal egg so you can see that schistosoma hematobium me terminal hai terminal spine can you see that which of them has a terminal spine so hematobium has a terminal spine okay now coming to this one mansoni what kind of a spine does it have lateral it has a lateral spine on one side and there's a very famous mnemonic for it that we always learn we've always learned uh, man sony man is man of course sony is the hindi for sleeping so sleeping man and how does one sleep so late ke so leta hua sota hua man that is how we learn it it is a leta hua sota hua man so man sony lateral spine finally coming to japonicum i don't see any spine it's looking totally round the spine has gone so japonicum is going to have a rudimentary spine you are not going to see it at all so now all your spines are done before i end quickly tell me the treatment aspect of it also because that should make your life easier what is the treatment of schistosoma that you have a quick answer fill in the blanks and then i'll also show you the life cycle so that sab kuch ek sath you know you should finish it off when you are reading a topic might as well finish it off yes what is the treatment of it as you answer i'll download the life cycle for you very good i've got the first answer i'll take it it is praziquantel perfect so here you have the entire table of schistosoma in front of you if the entire table would have been put into this see now how your life becomes easy how is this a case of schistosoma you remember i told you how will it come by eating or inhaling or skin so can you see schistosoma is entering via the skin penetration is how penetration is from the skin then what did i tell you which larva cercaria or meta cercaria they have written cercaria larva is going to enter the skin sexes are same or separate i can see male and female separate sexes another s fulfilled 
look at the eggs the eggs are all having spines so spinous eggs are there everything that we had read up up till now is put up over here circaria larva coming through the skin the sexes are going to be separate the eggs are going to be spinous by chance they wouldn't have written which schistosoma could you have identified is it schistosoma hematobium schistosoma mansoni schistosoma japonicum you will say ma'am number one i will look at the eggs these eggs i will look at i will look at their spines i will identify eggs ka photo nahi hai for example then how will you get to know then you will look at the location tell me if i say the organism is localizing over here in the urinary bladder which schistosoma is it so urinary bladder means schistosoma hematobium common sense if i say it is over here in the small intestine ileocecal region ileocecal mein which one will you mark schistosoma japonicum and if i say it is over here in the large intestine that is the sigmoid rectum wala area you will say it is schistosoma mansoni so see how they can pinpoint and try to confuse you but honestly if you know your if you read your tables revised them well trust me this is not a matter of worry it's not going to bother you much i hope that is settled for everyone again can we move forward to another question which is not something which many students like but we will have to study okay so it's a lengthy one and we are back to our pediatric story once again let's start reading one by one and i said patience because somewhere you will get that click here you have a 5 year old girl who's brought to her pediatrician by her mother and the mother is concerned about a red rash on her daughter's limbs and easy bruising kuch platelet wala chapter lag raha the rash started one week ago and has progressed past medical history is also having a minor cold two weeks ago the girl was born at 39 weeks gestation by a spontaneous vaginal delivery she is up to date with all the vaccines and is meeting all the milestones see this is a typical U usmle kind of a question where they try to waste a little bit of your time also she is up to date on vaccines that is done heart rate of 90 respiratory rate of 22 bp 110 by 60 temperature 37 degrees on physical examination again they've come back to the rash and bruises and now comes the real deal the platelet count there is thrombocytopenia everyone started answering and c and d ke beech mein is what i have got right okay thrombocytopenia is there and we can see all the other parameters are within expected range we can also see pt and aptt which are within reference ranges what is the most likely disorder so now as i said you kept reading kept reading but there came a point where there was a click and that was thrombocytopenia firstly the normal platelet count because normal values are very important 1.5 to 4 lakhs sometimes even 4.5 lakhs can do that is also normal so 1.5 to 4.5 lakhs is the normal here it is just 20000 so of course there is thrombocytopenia of course there will be bleeding of course there will be bruising because platelet kam hai okay so this is a common sense thing immune thrombocytopenic purpura the name only has thrombocytopenia in it but should i have also considered hemophilia a b and von willebrand disease yes bruising hai young female hai young girl hai i would have considered all of these but i know that in all of these hemophilia a b and von willebrand what is the test that should have come positive or what is the test that should have come increased we all know aptt should have come increased PT तो normal आएगा ठीक है that's not a problem. PT will come normal is fine, but here it's written APTT is also normal. No, in all of these APTT levels get elevated. Why? Hemophilia A, deficiency of which factor? Factor number एट Hemophilia B, deficiency of factor number नाइन and von willebrand factor also has a defect in factor number 8 so jab bhi 8 and 9 factors have a problem aptt has to be elevated and over here they wrote that aptt is totally normal only problem is the platelet and the platelet means it is itp now this is my next question to all of you medicine question which itp are you making it acute itp or chronic itp that is the last thing that you have to answer out here is it acute itp or chronic itp guys and my answer to you is going to be acute itp but you need to justify it how do i differentiate between 
acute immune thrombocytopenic purpura versus chronic immune thrombocytopenic purpura so let's get going what i'll do uh, don't read everything over here let's hide a few things i'll hide the chronic side okay let's hide the chronic side for a minute let's not talk about it i will only focus on the acute if you've learned the acute chronic bilkul opposite hai. so let's get going Acute is going to occur in children. Was your case a child? Yes, I had a five-year-old girl. Okay, there will always be a history of a viral infection. Was there a history of viral infection? I think there was. There was a minor cold two weeks ago. Viral, yes, cold. That is probably what I, I also have at this point of time. So, there is a viral infection that is going on. Minor cold and child ka history here. What happens with viral infections is antibodies are formed and because of these antibodies the platelet count is going to go down. The platelet count is going to be 50,000. So that's a considerably low value. Okay? So there will be a child with a viral infection with a platelet count of 50,000 and you don't have to do anything. Do you have to give any steroids? Do you, get, you have to give any you know, targeted therapies? Nothing. Within 6 months, everything will be fine. The antibodies will go away and platelet will be back to normal so you don't have to do anything so this means this is a case of acute itp versus if i now talk about chronic itp sab kuch opposite it is going to happen in adults is there going to be any viral fever viral history no platelet count will be very low these people come to you with 5000 10000 these kind of very very low negligible platelets and you have to give them steroids. You cannot treat them just by waiting and watching because at that kind of, uh, you know, platelet count of 5,000, 10,000, you can't sit and wait and watch. You have to give steroids to the patient. It is a must for you to do that. So now when I come back, ye chota bacha tha with a minor cold or a viral infection, I think this was a case of acute ITP. I hope that is okay with everyone. Yes, so this question is also settled and we will be taking up probably just the last question that we have for the day, which is the easiest one that I've kept, which is a confidence booster, a PYQ, which everyone knows and everyone will answer. So I wanted to end the session on something which is feel good factor. A 30 year old male patient presents with hypopigmented macules on the upper back and on physical on examination of the skin scrapings with 10% KOH, spaghetti and meatball appearance was seen. What is the probable diagnosis? A very recent question and uh, before I go to that, um, hemophilia B and C are XLR, Dr. SS has asked, yes, hemophilia B, no, hemophilia A and B are XLR, sorry guys, I'll just take a minute, I'll take that query first, we have three hemophilias, hemophilia A, B and C, remember hemophilia A and B are going to be XLR and hemophilia C is going to be AR, Theke? that was your doubt, so that is settled, I hope no confusion now. Coming back, meanwhile, everyone has answered. As I said, feel good wala question tha, to sabka feel good wala answer hai. And that is, as soon as you read, again, read the question till it finally clicks. And that is spaghetti and meatball appearance. Malassezia furfur. Malassezia furfur is going to be tinea versi color. This is exactly what was given over here. Tinea versi color or the name of the organism that you want to add it is Malassezia furfur. Right, some of you, Dr. Sayantani, I'll just finish this and I'll come back to your question of von Willebrand disease. Right, okay, um, what is this? Malassezia furfur. Did the question say hypopigmented lesions on the upper back? Classical, can you see pigmentation thoda lighter? Hai. Hypopigmented lesions on the upper back, so that is settled. Then they did a KOH mount. Have you ever wondered from the skin, why do we take skin and add 10% KOH? KOH add karne se kya ho hai? What is happening when I add KOH? Please note that KOH is for keratin digestion. I want to get rid of the keratin. I want to get rid of the keratin so that only the fungus is visible. Let all the keratin go away. So I always use a KOH mount. And in this, I can see spaghetti and meatball. What is spaghetti and meatball? All these round, 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 dot, 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 they must be the meatball. 
right and all these long long pseudo hyphae kind of thing these are going to be the spaghetti pasta so it is a spaghetti pasta the long long ones and the dot dot one is going to be meatball appearance and many of you are right ma'am we are pure vegetarians we don't like spaghetti meatball word we are going to use the word banana and grapes appearance same thing the lengthy ones are said to be the banana and the dot 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 is said to be the grape so whatever food choice you have okay so this is settled now you wanted to grow it on a culture media i don't think anyone will have a problem in the fact ke culture media mein aisa you are seeing fried egg appearance that is not the question fried egg everyone knows what is this culture media what is the name of this culture media that is the question that you have to fill in the blank for me over here if it's a fungus of course malassezia furfur is a fungus for every fungus the culture media is sabaurauds dextrose agar sda but kuch to extra hai na you have to fry the egg to fry the egg or to fry anything you need oil so this is sda with olive oil and that is what they ask you why do you add oil while using or while isolating this organism because this organism loves oil it is lipophilic it is a lipophilic it is a fat loving organism you will give it some fat it will grow so i gave it little bit of olive oil so that it could grow so question kaise aata hai question comes which organism will not grow on only sda malassezia will not grow what will you have to add i will have to add little bit of olive oil you add the olive oil and the eggs will get fried theek hai acha ha many of you call them manchurian noodles and all of that yeah very good so all of this is food related your favorite so we will end on that but now when you've come all this way please please also fill in the blanks and the last thing for the day coming to this where else do you see spaghetti and meatball appearance this is going to be for the inicet students spaghetti and meatball malassezia furfur mein ho gaya tell me one pap smear finding where you see spaghetti and meatball as well and then you will also fill in the blanks for fried egg pehle iska karo so what is it very good i think before that many students know what i'm going to ask so there is an organism called trichomonas and leptospira or not leptospira someone mentioned not leptospira yes anything else leptospira to leptospirosis alag disease ho gaya na what is it yes something to do with lepto no no not candida candida doesn't have spaghetti and meatball appearance candida has the shish kebab effect thoda different thoda confusion ho raha hai candida has the shish kebab effect so wo different hai why did all of you write candida over here just because i said pap smear doesn't mean i'm always going to ask you candida don't go in for that so it is the trichomonas and leptothrix okay it is trichomonas and leptothrix that is what gives you spaghetti and meatball appearance remember for those who answered candida for those who answered candida k for candida k for kebab that is how you had learnt it candida and kebab go together okay not a uh, spaghetti and meatball chalo this is now i am happy i asked you this because this was a confusion that is there okay now coming to the fried egg fill in the fried egg what all fried eggs have you told me microbiology mein abhi you did malassezia furfur now you will tell me one more with m and that is mycoplasma i think this for microbiology you know malassezia furfur and mycoplasma they show you uh, fried egg pathology mein kahan kahan hai which bone marrow biopsy shows you fried egg appearance hairy cell leukemia very good most of you have already answered it which brain tumor shows you fried egg appearance oligodendroglioma and which testicular and ovarian tumor shows you seminoma and disgerminoma seminoma and disgerminoma so this is finally your list of all the spaghetti and meatballs and all the fried eggs a flash card which is certainly going to help you a lot in many of the exams or any of the exams that you have so i guess without making it any further lengthy as we had planned for it to be a one hour session we'll wrap up on this but this is just the beginning and not the only session firstly today we had a mixed bag so tomorrow let's not have a mixed bag tomorrow let's have this uh, culture media wala session which is going to be a pure table form of fill in the blanks i'll write all the bacteria on one side i'll get the relevant photos of the culture media on the other side and it will all be written you just need to keep answering and keep it's like four or five slides we need to put in all the culture media at one place 
ओके देर आर अ कपल ऑफ डाउट्स विच आई वुड वॉन्ट टू पुट अप विच पीपल वर आस्किंग मी रिगार्डिंग अ क्वेश्चन दैट आई हैड पुट अप ऑन आई जस्ट गेट बैक टू दिस क्वेश्चन येस मेनी ऑफ यू वर आस्किंग मी मैम हाउ टू डिफ्रेंशिएट बिटवीन हीमोफीलिया ए बिकॉज दैट ऑल्सो हैज अ फैक्टर एट प्रॉब्लम एंड वॉन विलिब्रेन डिजीज बिकॉज दैट ऑल्सो हैज अ फैक्टर एट प्रॉब्लम बट देन यू आर फर्गेटिंग समथिंग वेरी बेसिक वॉन विलिब्रेन डिजीज ऑल्सो हैज वॉन मेन प्रॉब्लम क्या है मेन प्रॉब्लम इज वॉन विलिब्रेन फैक्टर बींग डेफिशेंट राइट सो दैट इज समथिंग दैट यू मिस्ड आउट ऑन इट विल नॉट जस्ट बी अ प्रॉब्लम इन फैक्टर एट बट ऑल्सो अ प्रॉब्लम इन वॉन विलिब्रेन फैक्टर इन हिमोफिलिया ए द प्रॉब्लम इज ओनली एंड ओनली इन फैक्टर एट नॉट इन वॉन विलिब्रेन फैक्टर डॉक्टर अथर आई डेफिनेटली लुक इन टू द टेलीग्राम रिक्वेस्ट दैट यू आर पुटिंग समन आस्किंग मी हाउ मेनी सेशन ऐसा कोई नंबर ऑफ सेशन नहीं है टिल वेर एवर वी कैन मैनेज फ्रॉम बोथ हैंड्स दैट इज द प्लान टिल द एग्जाम ओके सो यू नो ऑन एन एवरेज वील ट्राई दैट एवरी वीक वी कैन अकोमोडेट टू टू थ्री सेशन सो दैट वी आर इन अ रेग्युलर टच of these kind of questions and important topics so there is no uh, number that i have honestly thought of uh, tips and tricks to identify the slides dr shobhi we will come to that that i am you know is more for second year students than directly for the entrance exam students but we'll have a series on that separately also ठीक है सो आई होप डॉक्टर पेट्स वर्ल्ड हेज आस्क मी सी एनी वन हु इज करंटली प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर द एफ एम जी डिसम्बर फर्स्टली डोंट टेल मी योर स्कोर ऑफ द जुलाई एग्जाम बिकॉज आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू नो वॉट यू स्कोर इन द पास्ट गोइंग फॉरवर्ड आई ऑलवेज से गोइंग फॉरवर्ड मूविंग फॉरवर्ड क्या करना है वो सोचो क्या रिजल्ट आया मार्क्स दैट इज इरेलीवेंट दैट डजेंट मैटर नाउ लेट दैट फर गेट दैट नाउ यू जस्ट नीड टू फोकस ऑन रैपिड रिविजन एंड क्यू बैंक nothing out of the box needs to be done rapid revision q bank and nothing beyond that simple okay missing the kickstart morning sessions a uh, kind of a pseudo kickstart morning session although the morning happened very late at 10 but uh, yeah once uh, you know i've been uh, a lot of things happening uh, with health and other things so yeah once that is settled i will increase the number of sessions also right so not kick start morning exactly but a series of sessions will definitely be conducted so don't worry about that anyway abhi let's take uh, you know uh, let's start let's at least resume the process and let's meet tomorrow at 10 o'clock guys once again tomorrow's class is going to be very very boring and very very important so you like it or you dislike it but you cannot ignore it that kind of a class is going to be tomorrow at 10 o'clock because culture media is not anyone's favorite but that's the rule that something that you dislike examiner will love so you have to have to study it channel this same channel it will be conducted on why are you getting banned on telegram channel because if you two three things if you post any link these are all bot settings i don't ban anyone these are auto banning settings auto bot settings if you put a link or if you one of those apps sale and purchase and rent and all of that if you mention any of those or you put any link that is when someone ends up getting auto restricted from the group so just refrain from doing that okay so tomorrow session culture media uh, what i'll do tomorrow early morning before the session i'll give you a blank print out of the session okay so that if you want to annotate the culture media yourself you can do that also and if you want the session after the class i'll put that also i mean i'm okay with both ways but i'll put a blank session pdf in the morning before the class so that you can have it in front of you and you can try and fill in the blanks yourself also okay okay thank you so much for joining in guys any other questions and uh, doubts that i might have missed out in the chat please do put it in the comments below and i will get back to you thank you so much